This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Welcome to another episode of Primates. It's the show where we look at primates in popular culture from Chimpan A to Chimpan Z. Oh, great Simpsons reference. Thank you. Thank you very much. You see what I did there, though? I changed the Z to Z. To make it more culturally relevant yes. to how Australians pronounce exactly. it. Exactly. Correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alistair Trombley Birchall is my primate for today. Thanks so much for coming in, Alistair Trombley Birchall. Uh, it's, it's an honor. Plus, I'm... Prime mate number two, which is a prime number. Oh, it which is. Which I think are the primest of the prime mates. They're all the ones that land on prime numbers. Well, you uh, you, you made a very similar joke to Andy Matthews, <laughs> <laughs> who also said, I think almost word for word the same thing. So well done. Great. We share a brain. We don't have <laughs> different personalities anymore. You are, you are writing partners. Yeah, and we are both hosts of the Two in the Think Tank podcast where we share a brain, essentially. And right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, even though we're saying two. You've also done, you've done many uh, festival shows together. That's true. You write on a TV show together at the moment? Uh, not at the moment. We're unemployed at the moment. Oh, Together, sorry. though. Together. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, much like you, I've been in many involved in many TV shows with you as well. That's true. But um, we don't share a brain. I didn't know, I didn't know what a prime number was, I don't think. That's okay. It's going to be a thing that's going to come up a lot. Yeah, it feels that way. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's actually a podcast that I'm doing myself about people talking about their favorite prime numbers right. and prime numbers in popular culture. That's a really good idea. Like the like the number 23? There's a movie about that? Yes, I saw that at the cinema. I think I was the only person who liked it at the time. It wasn't until later that I realized I didn't like it when everyone <laughs> told me it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think it was good. No, But, yeah. you know, Jim Carrey was there and we liked him. and he you For know. quite a while, if I saw a movie at the cinema, mm. it was great. Yeah. I just, and then it was, yeah, it was real sad when I started going to movies at the cinemas. I was like, oh, this sucks. Yeah, it, it wasn't enough anymore to just be seeing it in a big screen with surround sound. It's still nice to be out of the house. That's true. You know. Yeah, <laughs> you've always got um, popcorn. Yeah, right? and and you know, aw- being away from responsibilities. Yeah. Oh yeah, just shutting off. Oh, oh yeah. my, my good <laughs> word. Off. Anyway, I'm Matt Stewart. Did I say that? Uh, this week we're looking at what? What show are we looking at? Which monkey and or, or chimp or ape from popular culture are we looking at this week, Alistair? Uh. Matt, tonight's monkey, <laughs> ape, or uh, simian of some sort is the episode of Friends where they introduce Marcel, the monkey uh, that Ross has as a buddy. Should we should we hear a little clip? Yeah, of Marcel being introduced. Mm-hmm. Guys, there's uh, somebody I'd like you to meet. That would be Marcel. You want to say hi? No, no, I don't. Oh, he is precious. Where did you get him? My friend Bethel rescued him from some lab. That is so cruel. Why? Why would a parent name their child Bethel? <laughs> hey, the Bethel line. I had to leave that Bethel line in. Absolutely. You know, or else that segment would have, would have been incomplete. Yes. She's Phoebe. She is. Is she the funny one? Yeah, well, she's kind of the female Chandler. Right. <laughs> you know you know the way that female women Chandler. love to just be referred to as the female version of, an, uh, yes. of a male thing? Like She-Hulk or... She-Hulk. You know, Miss America. She- That's right. <laughs> as is, which I think is the female version of Captain America. Or, or, or Uncle Sam. Yes. Um, Auntie Sam. Uh, Auntie America. Auntie Uncle Sam. Auntie America is actually a very different thing. Yes. It's a, it's a, <laughs> All right. So we talk about, we like to talk about, um, I mean, we're making up the rules as we go, really, but I like to talk about where, uh, how the monkey was put on stage, on screen, in this well, case. Well, they did not waste any time. Jeez, it was quick, wasn't it? As soon as the I'll be there for you is over, you know, and they had that introductory m- music. Uh, I don't remember the notes exactly. People can go back and listen back, but it felt like it was a dun, dun, dun. Yes, something like that. that sounds right. Mm. It was kind of maybe it was a, it was a bit more of a, a sort of a, an introductory progression. It, it was, and 
pretty much the very first thing in the show after Ross opens the door is the introduction of Marcel the monkey. Obviously, you don't want to leave out uh, the opening of the door because that was a great moment as well. The monkeys in this case are mm. played by real monkeys. Whoa. Uh, two real monkeys. Mm. Uh, capuchin monkeys. Is that yeah. how you say it, Al? Yeah, I think they're the capu- the capuchin monkeys. I think they're they got a bit of the spider monkey about them, but I would say they're a bit bigger and probably less less brown and gray and probably more white and blackish kind and of really dark- capuchin. Yeah, really capuchin. Jeez, that's a capuchin monkey. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, related is, do you think in any way the words are related to cappuccino? Yeah, I think they are uh, caffeine fiends. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think if you if you left one of these monkeys, they're also smart. If you left them in there with a sort of an espresso machine, at some point they would just start having espresso. Yeah. I mean, they would probably learn to you froth put, the put milk. put a thousand monkeys on a thousand espresso Pre- machines. Mm-hmm. Eventually they're going to they're they're gonna gonna, make Shakespeare's cappuccino. They're going to work out the cappuccino, and which in, includes, you know, the, the sprinkling of the chocolate at the end. But, you know, they'll get the milk and espresso shot right, ratio right. They'll figure out the perfect temperature to not burn the milk. Which is critical. It's critical. Yeah. I mean, for a good cappuccino. Yeah. Are you good? <laughs> which, is, which, of course, Shakespeare's cappuccino yeah. would be a good cappuccino. That's right. Yeah. I, I think that's the only thing I can tell about a good and bad coffee is when it's bad, it's like, oh, this tastes burnt. Mm. I think it's bad. Whereas yeah. other people can, they have like way more spectrum in between going, this is really good uh, apart from the fact that something else other than it being burnt is wrong. Well, I think your your initial sort of approach of if it tastes bad, it is bad. Yes. Is you're already you're already doing so much of the work that the details almost don't matter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the monkeys, the capuchin monkeys, are actually two monkeys mm. playing Marcel, Katie and Monkey, which feels like a rip off for yeah, Monkey because yeah, a monkey shouldn't have the name Katie. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's like that could be a good Phoebe joke. That would be a great <laughs> joke, which is it was. I mean, great like friends joke. It was really nice. Just first of all, just r- returning to friends after so many years, yeah, and just seeing how joke, joke, joke they are, and how many of them sometimes because they just have the rhythm, it doesn't even matter that they're they're like they're they're sort of not great jokes. Are you thinking of uh, any in particular? Well, I mean, Chandler's first line when when he sees. Uh, Marcel on Ross's shoulders. He goes, "Oh look, uh, the monkey's got a Ross on under its butt or on its butt or something like that." And, yeah. go, and people laugh. And I guess it is a flipperoo to Ross has a monkey on his shoulder. Yeah. Or is it? Yeah. Or is it like saying that the monkey sort of like Ross is like a wart or something? Yeah. And so it feels like something like that. well, it, it, because it, he says it in such a way with so much confidence that it makes you think that this is like a saying. Yeah. You know, oh, that monkey's got a something on its butt. <laughs> yeah. Like that. But I, if, as far as I know, referring to a thing that a monkey has on its butt isn't like a cultural a cultural norm that I'm missing out on from the United States. I, like I grew up in Canada and I, I feel like I would have heard – it would have crossed the – You could basically see it. America from your front yard, right? Basically. Yeah. In a basic way. Yeah. That is accurate. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, I don't want to talk in basic terms. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's go in deeper. I've, I found an article uh, on uh, t- the Telegraph UK website newspaper about Katie and Monkey from Friends. You want me mm. to read you a little bit about it? Please tell me they're still they're still okay. They are still alive. <gasps> yeah, this was from only last year, and as as of last year, they were still alive. This is okay. This is great news. Um, this first line um, didn't ring true for me, but anyway, it's common knowledge that film and TV productions often hire identical twins when shooting scenes with a baby present. I knew that. That's knew common that. knowledge. Yeah, because twins. You, you can only get babies to work for like 15 minutes at a time. Right. Well, that is common knowledge. Mm. Don't work with babies and animals. That's also, that's a common, that's a, like a, an idiom. Yeah, and I hardly know anything about working in TV. So. What are you talking about? That's your job. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, both for legal reasons and in case one of them spits up or gets all shrieky. So it's a, you can already tell this is a funny article. Yeah. They're yeah, using yeah. funny funny lines, funny words. Yeah, and they're kind of like lightening the mood. Yeah. You know? All shrieky is fun. Yeah, all shrieky. And that could that could work with monkeys as well. So I feel like they're kind of there's a That's foreshadowing. A, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, you you really you foreshadowed the foreshadowing there cuz uh they go on to say but the same thing also occurs with some animal actors too. Most notably in the case of Katie and Monkey. The two capuchin monkeys 
I had to play Ross Geller's Pet Marcel on Friends. Here's a quote. I don't know who it's from just as yet, but we'll we'll hear it as I read out this next okay. paragraph. Katie is more active, and we use her for the more action-oriented themes. Their trainer, Denise Sanders, said in 2002. It was <laughs> Denise Sanders. What oh. a great reveal. Oh, yeah. That, that was actually really nice. It was almost like the reveal when... When Ross opens the door at the beginning of the episode and he says, I want you to meet somebody. Oh, who's it going to be? And then it turns out it's a monkey. So it's really not even a somebody, which is kind of how you know that they're going to be striking you over the head with jokes nonstop in this show. Because they they, no nothing, no rules matter to them. Like the the means of words. Joke machine gun. Mm. Is it, I think that's what they call it they, in the industry. The mini gun. Mini gun. Yeah, they yep. they started shooting and the and the and the shells started falling to the ground. You could, which is what the sound of laughter is like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our friend uh, Denise Sanders goes on to say, "Monkey is a little more mellow, so she is used more for sitting on the shoulder or sitting down. She does right. the sitting roll, so that would have been her on that." Famous opening scene. Yeah, right. And kind of monkey is a is a girl's name as well. It's yeah, quite interesting. It's a yeah. unisex name in the monkey world. Yeah, maybe in the monkey. I, like, How many or, monkeys do you know? Because I only really know monkey from Monkey Magic, and he's a man. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's a monkey as well, I suppose. Yeah. So I mean, so they equally could have called a man. That's true. Yeah. I think there's also a monkey. Uh, maybe the bass player from Corn. I think his name was Monkey. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Those are. I think there's a there's an album by maybe one of the guys who did the gorillas called oh, Monkey. Really? Yeah. He's really doubling down on that. Where he kind of used a lot of that that's that kind of you know the the, the Chinese myth from which Monkey the right. Monkey Magic is inspired from, and I think he made a kind of very like a, a slightly Chinese inspired album. That sounds cool. Yeah. The article goes on to say <laughs> while Sanders praised their talents. It was also no secret that the pair were nightmares on the set of Friends. Mm. Regularly holding up filming, vomiting up worms, and defecating on the furniture. Right. Well, that, you know, the the vomiting up worms wouldn't be surprising, I guess, if they were feeding them worms. Yes. Yeah. I mean, to to me and you, that came out of nowhere. Yeah, and and that probably would have also happened if they'd fed any of the cast members worms. Yes. You know, because I think it's 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 a sort of a disgusting meal, and therefore it's it's probably hard to keep down. Yeah, they're going to sit uncomfortably in your stomach. Mm, yeah, wriggling about like that as they do, because you know, with worms, if you cut them in half, they they just become two worms. Is that a true thing? I thought well, that was a myth, but that I, feels right. I mean, it it feels right, and yeah. that's kind of what I'm going that's, on. That's at the much moment. like coffee tasting, right? Yeah, exactly. If you feel like the worm is still alive in in the form of two worms. When it comes to worms wriggling in uh, that you've eaten, I'd like to just go with my gut. Yes, yeah. I think that's great. Always go with your gut in this case, mm, worms. Absolutely. Yeah, don't obviously not always. Uh, either, oh, here's another little here's another little uh, uh, jovial line here. So after saying defecating on furniture, they say even Catherine Heigl never went that far. <laughs> Is she famously trouble on sets. I don't know, but was she was she one of jo- uh, Ross's partners in the show? I don't think so. Right, I don't so, remember her ever being on the show at all. That feel feels like, like they're that someone's got a beef with Caf- Catherine Heigl, mm. and they're they're just shoehorning it into this article about a, a couple of monkeys. That's right. Yeah, that's to a be big honest, beef. It's, it's a, this destruction of character there. Yeah, I'd say that's you know that's unprofessional. Was she one of those people that like was was slandered by? By Weinstein to try to get her to stop working or something oh, like that. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I know there was people like that where he he would badmouth them because they re- rejected him and things like oh. that, and so then he would ruin their careers like that. So maybe Heigl, she's just picking up. Look, I oh, mean, this is this is from the pre Weinstein era. This is this is articles from twenty seventeen, right? Also, maybe, no, I know, but like, but so Weinstein, maybe Weinstein was was bad mouthing people throughout. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Maybe maybe it hadn't come to light oh, yet. Oh, yeah. So maybe maybe now this author would would take that back, knowing potentially this Weinstein thing that we're speculating. Well, on. I think if if you know if all this deep deep speculation turns out to be true, I think that this uh, this writer needs to sort of take back some of those. Words. Yeah, I Absolutely. think I think that whole sentence. Yeah, at least the bit that says Catherine Heigl. Yeah, so maybe they, you could put something else in there. Yeah, <laughs> maybe somebody maybe. Lassie. Um, yeah, or or you know, some maybe like even a male actor. You know, I think I think I've heard Thomas Tom Hardy is quite hard to work with. Yeah, even Tom Hardy. What's the the Batman guy? Remember, he yelled like, at everyone. Yeah, well, Tom Hardy was in Batman. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> that's what I was talking about. 
Uh, ultimately, the Friends cast demanded Marcel be written off the show. I hate the monkey, David Schwimmer told Entertainment Weekly in 1995. I wish it were dead. Whoa. I Whoa. Mean, and he, like, he must have known as well as anyone that there were two monkeys. <laughs> That's right. And he's just referring to one. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe there is only one that he wanted dead. Right. Well, probably Tracy, the more active one. Katie. Katie. That's true. Because otherwise he wouldn't have said, I hate the monkey. He would have said, I hate monkey. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he referred to it as Katie is the monkey and monkey is monkey. Yeah. I assume. Yeah. More speculation there. Yeah. Unless he refers to M- Marcel the character and then it, like, you know, as in the character, the monkey. So he wants the character to die. And so maybe he was suggesting plot lines. Right. You know, he's thought, well, the writers are going to, you know, probably keep up to date with the media that we, you know, the actors do. And maybe they'll get the hint and we can kill off the character. But he doesn't want the monkeys themselves to die, even though it's the real monkeys that are causing him grief. That makes sense. Because, I mean, for him, his relationship with the monkey ends once his relationship with the monkey in the show ends. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot a lot going on there that makes sense to me. That rings true. And 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 like a burnt coffee, mm-hmm. it's the ringing that matters. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The ringing of the of on the, on the tongue. Of the, yeah, the, the the flavor ring. Yeah, the flavor ring. Mm. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> they say they they say this uh, just to sort of finish up on this article. Say uh, awkwardly, it was Katie and Monkey who had the most successful movie career of all the Friends cast when it first began, casting the lead monkey role in the nineteen ninety film nineteen ninety five film Outbreak. I think about that monkey almost any time somebody sneezes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's Katie and Monkey. Yeah. Wow. And because that, 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 I mean, that to me, that was an iconic monkey. Um, did you see Outbreak? No, I never saw Outbreak. For some reason, I saw it when I was in primary school. Uh, people, multiple times, I think. I remember people bleeding from the eyes. Oh, uh, wow. You know, like it's, it's a real outbreak of a, it kind of seems very close to Ebola. I don't know if it was Ebola. At the time, I didn't know about Ebola. Right. Um, but did they know, ever name check Ebola, or maybe they didn't get the rights? I just don't remember that much. Right. At the time, I was speaking a lot of French, and <laughs> it was a different time. It was a different time. You know, I didn't. I, I might have even watched the uh, like the French version of Outbreak. Wow. And I don't. I don't How know what the French outbreak word. In French. I, um, you were answering that before I even asked it. And no, I was going to say that I don't know what the French word for out uh, for Ebola is. Right. It could be Ebola. Yeah, that sounds. <laughs> that sounds you know, like um, Ebola. Ebola, Ebola, yeah, and but still, that kind of doesn't ring that Ebola to me because it's that hard E at the beginning, right? I feel like Ebola, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, did you did you realize this that um, based on that based on outbreak, uh, Friends satirized uh, the movie Outbreak when Marcel was cast in the lead in the fictitious Outbreak Two, the virus takes Manhattan. I didn't so know they that. sort of folded it back into itself there. I guess they knew they had something big on their hands, so they may as well use it. So what's, what what season was this? This was season one. This is season one. Season one, yeah. This feels like a season ten story. Yeah, like line. a jump and oh sorry, the the one where you just watched the one with the monkey is season one. The one where they had outbreak two, I'm not sure, but that does sound like a jumping the shark thing, right? Yeah, it feels like we all right, we've run out of ideas, let's give Ross a monkey. Yeah, that's right. But no, episode ten. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's you should you couldn't tell that from the fashion? No. I don't I don't remember the years that it was made. And also they they all seemed very current to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean probably because it's coming back round. Should we talk a little bit about um what the what the movie was all about? Oh the movie, the T V show, what this episode was all about. Right. Because well, really it was about New Year's Eve. There was, yeah, there was, you know, I guess like most sitcoms, there was sort of two or three storylines. Yeah. There's the there's the Ross and Marcel storyline, which is he's got this monkey from his friend Bethel who rescued it from a lab, which already they don't go into she's just stolen a monkey. Yeah. And they don't go into sort of the repercussions of that. And, you know, because he works at a university, so it's probably stolen at the university. He's got stolen goods in his... He, which he carries around on his back. Yeah. Like, that's not a, the kind of thing that's going to go unnoticed down the street in Manhattan, mm. right? Yeah. Where he's, we don't know how he's getting from point A to point B. Uh, so is he going on the on public transport with this? Is he catching cabs? Is he driving? Driving doesn't seem that likely in New York City. No, they never talk about cars on this. 
mm. show I from memory. I know That's Seinfeld, they, there was a, a few car storylines, but I don't remember any. Yeah, no, me neither. Driving stuff in Friends. So there's this and this. He's gone through a breakup, and so now the the kind of the monkey is is sort of acting as like a rebound. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think that's where the most of the comedy will come from when you have an animal uh, on stage uh, on you know in the thing is that it's it's being it's taking pl- the the place of a person. Yes, and you're treating it like a person. And that that is really the one joke that he has with the monkey is that it's he's talking about it like a a, a partner who's not treating him very well. Mm, yeah, and and they're really milking it. They're, they're, they've, they've, I'm amazed that there is going to be a second episode with Marcel. Yeah, and that they had to, like, the cast had to demand that he was written out of the show or the character was written out of the show because, um, yeah, it feels like that's a one-episode thing. <laughs> but what's amazing is that the, the, the writers of this show went into this, this series, this new television series that they were creating about a group of friends who live together, thinking there's probably going to be a monkey – this first season, like, yeah, like that might the monkey may have been in the pitch. I reckon, yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, monkey. I think monkey movies in particular are very big in the nineties. Mm. There yeah. were quite a few around. Dunstan checks in a lot of these movies. I want to explore on this show coming What's up. What's the uh, the nineties might be the golden age. Ed, the one with Matt LeBlanc. Ed with Matt the, LeBlanc, the the pitching the pitching chimp. Yep, that's I've never the seen that one, but that's got to come up somewhere on yeah. the show. Chimp Van Z, yeah, yes, the as we say down here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's one of the storylines is, is, is mm-hmm. Ross and the monkey. I'm, I'm, we're going into this assuming people know what Friends is. It's like one of the biggest sitcoms of all time. Yeah, it's kind of the Beatles of of of, of uh, well-known sitcoms. Yeah, you know? Where, and Seinfeld's the Rolling Stones. Is that what you think? No, I, I think I, I think I'm kind of like I'm I'm using it Beatles. I'm not even keeping. <laughs> look, I feel bad that I because I don't think it's the best. I just think in in terms of their well knownness. Yes, you know there was Frenzel Mania. Should I should I have said so that was something about like, the band Frenzel Rom? A different Frenzel Mania. Wait, wait. Maybe I should say, use like what's that? What's that kind of like Latino song that's really big at the moment? Uh, like, like in the last year or so. Oh, okay. Oh, um, Jambalaya. No. Jum- yeah, the Macarena. The Macarena. <laughs> it's kind of the Macarena of sitcoms. Yes. Yeah. Great. Long lasting. Uh, just quality, but you know, meat and potatoes kind of stuff. Yeah. Know? Whereas Seinfeld is is kind of greater. It's the Tom Waits. It changed things a bit. Yeah, it changes things. It's Tom Waits only if Tom Waits had a lot of number one albums. Yeah. So let, let's say it's more like Seinfeld is the Beatles, <laughs> much like how you were initially implying that I'd made a mistake. No, I wasn't. Because <laughs> oh, Rolling Stones are jet, like often seen as the cooler one, and I would I would say that Seinfeld's like the cooler Friends, maybe. No, anyway, I don't this, think the Rolling Stones are that cool. I don't either, but that's yeah. I think that's what that's what Stones fans think. They're like <laughs> they did more drugs. They were cooler. I think you're you've built this whole podcast around pandering to Rolling Stones fans, and I think that that's wrong. Okay. And I want you to. I'm going to strip that to, back. I'm I rolling to, it back. I, I want you to correct the direction this pod is going okay i yeah. will well i'm i'm a i'm beatles i'm beatles over stones me too great we're on the We've same page we do share a brain after all now we're paying to two, our people we're the two people who who like the beatles yeah we're very unique thank you i've always said that about us um so that's so the one storyline's ross and the monkey yeah the other probably there's two other big storylines mm. one of them's about phoebe i said that weird phoebe meeting um the guy who plays a poo from the Simpsons. Hank Azaria. Hank Azaria, who yeah. does many of the voices on The Simpsons. I think Chief Wiggum as well. Yeah. Uh, I think he, he does the most voices, something like 23, 24 voices right. quite regularly. Uh, yeah, he does Professor F- F- Fink. Frink. Fink. Frink. He makes you laugh. He makes you think. Yeah. And he's sort of playing somewhat of a, a Professor Frink character in this. Maybe yeah. like a, a toned down Frink. Yeah. He's uh, he, he's taken all the Jerry Lewis out of F- Frink. Yeah. Right, and he's just a nerd because he's wearing glasses, but he's a physicist. Yes, but his fashion is the only fashion that holds up in the show in the modern age. He's yeah. the only guy who you could see now and, and not assume is at a friend's dress-up party. Yeah, that's right. That we- outfit Chandler ends up wearing is one of the wildest things I've ever seen. <laughs> I didn't notice it. Didn't you? No, but you did mention it, but it was too late. He turned his back because he was walking It's around. like an olive green suit mm. jacket. With a like a cream, like a really floppy, silky cream shirt with a big floppy collar and wow. a and a maroon, like bespoke maroon uh, vest. 
Yeah, wow. Vests, yeah, vests were big. He wore th- at least three vests in the half hour show. The the shops that the that the costume people went to 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 buy stuff ran out of vests by the end of this episode. Yeah. Um do you think he would like cuz Rachel's haircut at some point was iconic and very mm. um uh, 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 inspirational to people around mm. the world were getting the Rachel. Do you think anyone was ever getting the Chandler and getting a vest? Well, you know his his classic saying, could you be any more something? Yeah. I think it would be cool to get a kind of a vest that just says, could you vest anymore? <laughs> I don't know. That's good. Yeah, you think? I want to get that made. <laughs> could you vest anymore? <laughs> something? <laughs> he, like, he's definitely, there's definitely something funny about it. He did make me laugh at one point when he was, he was talking very loudly about how lonely he was mm. and then finished by saying, I'm talking very loudly. Yeah. Yeah, like that, as he realized it, that felt that that felt funny to me. The whole Chandler like uh, sarcastic wisecracker character, I haven't seen as much since Friends, but I'm just realizing that's probably what all of Big Bang Theory is. Yeah, there'd be one of them is that character. I would have thought. Yeah, uh, they might look. Maybe they all are. Maybe they're all Chandlers. What yeah. you've realized is they they've taken one winning element. Without having watched Big Bang Theory, <laughs> this is my theory. They've taken one winning element of Friends, uh, not Marcel, but Chandler. Right. And one and of the two big winning elements. elements of Friends. And then they've just recreated a show. What if everybody was Chandler? And what if, uh, well, there's also an Indian character. I've seen an episode. I think, you know, I think it's inappropriate to suggest that an Indian person can't play a Chandler. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying they've they've uh, slightly tweaked it. There's an Indian Chandler. Oh uh, yeah, oh, then there's great. like a tall, skinny Chandler. I just thought there's a shorter were, Chandler. I thought you were starting. But to there's a white guy. Pander this show to people who think that Indian people can't play Chandler. No, no, I, I, I don't. If there, if you are listening and you think an Indian person can't play Chandler, turn off. I don't want you. That's right. This is uh, not the podcast. This for is you. not for you, sir or madam, because women can also not think. Indians can play Chandler. <laughs> or think it. As we've always said. So they're, they're two of the main arcs. And the third one was they were building up to a New Year's Eve party. One or a few of them were like, we don't want to make any expectations. Let's have a pact where none of us have a date on New Year's Eve. Yeah, because everybody but Rachel was dating somebody. Uh, no, everybody but Rachel was single. But uh, And so, yeah, they didn't want to have to go through that whole rigmarole. And, and they were making it seem like it's very important that you kiss someone when when New Year's... The when, 90s was a different time. It was a different time, the 90s, yeah. There absolutely. was a lot of cachet yeah, and, with kissing. And it was important to impose yourself on people Yes, at the beginning of the year, to start the year with... Potentially some some inappropriate um, advances, yeah, or very appropriate. There, I did wa- watching that scene where they did. There was a kiss. What two of the extras? One of them, the guy you could see from the back of his head, went in for the mouth kiss. I'm pretty sure, and the woman turned for the for the cheek kiss. Wow. See, I didn't I didn't notice that, but you got a real sharp eye. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that that's an awkward moment. And Chandler really at the end there was really begging for kisses yeah like from his close friends he was like look there's three girls there's three guys let's just all get a kiss like that and then when when the girls were like i don't think so he was like i want a kiss i want a kiss and that's when joey planted one on yeah which was which was got a big laugh and i think maybe was the finish of the show yeah that's what you know men kissing was funny in the 90s look it was a different time absolutely well look i think you could still get a chuckle out of people uh in certain areas for a man kiss- kissing. I think, well, I mean, it probably wasn't just it was men kissing. That was part of it. But it was also like Joey, like, right, you wanted it. And he was he's like, I'll I'll give it to you. It just Joey, misunderstanding? To... Is that where the humor it, it, was? That's right. It was a surprise. I mean, look, a me- men kissing can still be funny if it's surprising, you know? If, let's say, a man was going in to eat, take a huge bite from a meat pie. Right. But as he went in... The lid of the pie opens up, and two lips, man lips, come out, yeah. and they plant on the, That's the mouth. Funny. That's that funny. That is very funny. It's a surprise. Funny. You didn't expect to meat lips. There to be a man. Meat lips is always going to be funny. Yeah, meaty, meaty man lips. Yeah, I'll never, I'll never not laugh. You try and stop me, I, I won't stop. <laughs> won't stop, can't stop. Uh, there's a, there's a few, uh, few notes on the uh, friends fandom page. Mm-hmm. 
uh, for this episode, including this is the first appearance of Fun Bobby. It really, really felt like they were talking about a character <laughs> that had already existed in this universe. Right. So Fun Bobby, who's Monica's date that she brings to New Year's Eve. Uh, spoiler alert, she, they all end up bringing dates except for Ross, who does sort of bring a date because yeah. he brings Marcel. But Marcel uh, leaves straight away, which s- suggests that that was probably Monkey. Right. Because Tracy? Katie. Katie. <laughs> Katie likes to jump around. Oh, Katie. So it was Katie who likes to jump yeah, around. So okay. Katie was the one who ran off. Yes. They probably used Katie at that point because as soon as he got there, she ran off. Yeah. Whenever you're looking at Ross and thinking, that monkey has got a Ross on its butt, yeah. that's monkey. That's monkey. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, In any other circumstance, that's that's going to be Katie. Yeah, so that was so Katie was his date to that to that pod. I mean, not pod, to that to that. <laughs> Everything's a pod to you. <laughs> Everything's a pod. And I, I, oh, yeah. And so, oh, yeah. And... What was his name? Good Time Jim? <laughs> no, Fun Bobby. Fun Bobby. Good Time Jim is better. Yeah, Good Time Jim. And so he shows up and he's really sad because somebody just died. Yes. And so I guess the contrast between his his name and his attitude. That really flipped the expectation. Re- absolutely. There, but then it doesn't flip the expectation that much because as soon as you see it, you go, oh, yeah, people can be named things that are the opposite of what they are. Yeah, and that continued to surprise me. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Okay. Kept there was I never ran out of juice uh, for that one. We also uh, uh, see Janice again, who apparently is uh, is back from earlier. uh, Chandler's ex girlfriend, who I think they must have said, and I don't know this for sure because I don't know how this times out, but I'm pretty sure they went. We want to cast the nanny as a Chandler girlfriend character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they pretty much did that. I guess if they were if if. Their thinking was, if people are watching the nanny uh, to get their hit of a kind of a quite a like an annoying voiced, yeah, big woman, laugh, you big know, wild big laugh. hair, big wild laugh kind of yeah thing, uh, then maybe they'll switch over and watch Friends because they know that once they know that they can get a hit of that. You're also getting uh, white Indian Chandler, yeah, um, mm-hmm. and all, all the other characters as well. So it's sort of and bringing monkey. everything you need together into the one place. Yeah, monkey, and yeah. I mean, that would have taken a lot of foresight for them to be like, "We'll get the Big Bang Theory uh, viewers across as well," because that obviously was a long way. But they from probably did. Existence. They probably had all those Big Bang Theory viewers. When you hear them say Friends was ahead of its time, these are the kind of things they're talking about. Absolutely. I don't know if people have said that before, because I think a lot of people say it was a, sort of a direct rip off of Seinfeld, a watered down Seinfeld. I know Jerry, Jerry, good friend of the show, Jerry Seinfeld, thinks yeah. that way. He's well, like friends hanging out. Have you heard him say that? He's like, he's like friend, a show, a sitcom about friends hanging out in New York. Mm. Yeah, I think I've heard of that idea yeah. somewhere before. Somewhere. I like how he thinks fr- having friends in New York is is now his thing. That's great. Yeah, and I he, I do like that a lot. Has he genuinely said that? Yeah, he said something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Love that guy. Mad about you is way more like Seinfeld. Yeah, like they're all their inter- intonation and everything was sounds well, so cr- Seinfeld. Kramer was even in there. I think Paul Reiser was Kramer's landlord. There was a little crossover episode. Whoa! Yeah. So that Wait, was a shared. Also, universe. Paul Reiser was the landlord. Yeah. Of, of oh oh in Seinfeld. Uh, I think Kramer was the tenant in Mad About You, but both shows were existing at the time, so it was. Yeah, right. It was like a, an NBC crossover. So there was a little NBC sitcom universe. cinematic universe. Yeah. Oh, cinematic. But there was also, there's this weird thing where, because um, Phoebe Boucher, mm. her twin Ursula is a character on Mad, Mad About You, and they share as well. So Friends and Mad, Mad About You and Mad About You and Seinfeld. So it kind of works mm. that Seinfeld and Friends are in the same universe. Yeah. Only... Yeah, there's contradictions in that as well because um, oh, I forget why, but there's a there's it doesn't quite work, but it's sort of you could argue that they they exist in the same universe, this New York City um, hmm. universe. Universe, yeah, <laughs> it's just fascinating. A city universe, yeah, yeah, that's great. There's a couple of things here. There's a uh, that uh, people they were a bit disappointed about. You know when um, Apu's voice, Hank Azaria, Hank Azaria says, "White Apu, White Apu." So <laughs> yeah, have they now? Have they done anything about that yet? They did it, and it was it, it wasn't good. Oh, they called it out, but they haven't changed anything. They haven't changed anything, and they didn't call it out in a good way. 
Oh. In a way that was like, what can you do? Oh. Like that. And then everyone was like, ooh, would have been better if you did nothing. <laughs> yeah. I assume they were going to either, they're just going to revoice a poo with an Indian person. I don't know. I think, look, I am not equipped to, to, to work it out. But I think if you're getting an Indian person to on to also come on and just do a poo's Yeah, well, I would have thought that'd accent, be some... Which is some or maybe white man's it, version of a, yeah, an right. Indian accent also would be weird. Yeah, but I, I, I wasn't suggesting he'd do a <laughs> caricature voice. So, so Apu's voice would change? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then maybe, or maybe just get an, a new Quickie Mart boss who is a different character. Maybe a Apu dies. I mean, they've killed off Mod Flanders and others. I know, but then you're also... <laughs> this is such a weird like but then you're also getting rid of like uh <laughs> of diversity on the Simpsons. Well you well you replace him <laughs> with another Indian yeah, right. character who's actually Indian. Yeah, but he but he's also probably just like just sounds like a regular American guy. Yeah. They could just get uh Hari uh, Kondabulu, who wrote who did the documentary The Problem with Apu, yeah. get him to just do a character on The Simpsons, an Indian character who uh, is a, just a, you know, all-American uh, yeah. comedian. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. oh, that's good, yeah. He could be an all-American comedian. Yeah. All-American all the time. Yeah. That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds great. Um, so um, Hank Azaria's character says, uh, or no, Max, Hank's friend, says uh, that uh, they've got a deal. Uh, they've, they won their grant, their science mm-hmm. grant. Just after um, Phoebe's fallen in love, and they've had their first kiss. Yes, after quite a lot of waiting, quite a, quite a bit, a comedic amount of time, uh, and they but they got this grant to go um, do further scientific research in in uh, Minsk. Yeah, and he goes, it's in Russia, and Phoebe goes, I know, but it's actually in Belarus. Wow, what a isn't that weird that no one checked that? Yeah, um, and that that was as of nineteen ninety one, so it was about three years. Uh, it had cha- it had been changed for over three years when the USSR disbanded. So they even said Russia when Russia didn't exist at the time. It was the USSR, right? Or, uh, or, or did th- Russia still exist at the time? I th- well, Russia was part of the USSR, right, I think. Right, right. I oh, mean, man. I'm bagging these guys for not uh, doing their research, Uh-oh. and I have not done my research. Uh-oh. But I'm also just reading. This is off a fandom page. Phantom? Yeah, Phantom. The ghost who walks. <laughs> This is this is outside of of the Friends episode. But what what's your favorite primate? Well, it's probably the orangutan. Right, right? now, I'm always scared of saying the word out, lo- out yes. loud because I I always know that there's there's one G missing at the end of one of the words, and I'm never sure which word. That is so good. So it's either orangutan or it's orang. Gatan. I I genuinely have this same thing, <laughs> and I was talking about on other part on Do Go On recently because I I actually lost five bucks once when I, I was so sure it was the wrong way. I was so sure. I can, now I don't even know what the right and the yeah. wrong way is. Orangutan, orang, yeah, utang. I think yeah, I think it's wrong to say tang at the end. Orangutan, orangutan. Yeah. yeah, I was at a wedding at halftime at a wedding. You know that bit between the you, all, you guys were all eating oranges. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we were getting a pep talk from the coach. You yeah. know that bit between the wedding part and the party part? Yeah, yeah, wedding party. And then the, uh, yeah, so for some reason at the pub in between, we, I got into a, a heated discussion about it. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, mate, but mm. you, you're embarrassing yourself here. It's definitely a ranatang. <laughs> he goes, put money on it. I had five bucks on five me. I said, bucks. putting that $5 down. You didn't care. I didn't That's- care. It's, and you only went with five bucks because that's all you had in your wallet at the time. You would have put down a hundred. I would have put whatever I had on me. Yeah. It's not as, it's, you know. It, I mean, you were going through a gambling phase. Yes. And it was probably not a good, I'm, I'm glad you came out of it, you know, and, you know, unscarred. Yeah. You know, well, relatively. Because like, you weren't putting part of your, parts of your body on the line. Yeah. I'm yeah. putting, I'm putting my, um, my kidney on the line. That would have been awful. So the orangutan. Oran- yeah. Uh, orangutan. And so you would think that I would I would propose us watch like something like Dunstan checks in or That's an orangutan. Yeah, I'm pretty orangutan. sure. <laughs> it's orangutan. <laughs> um Dunstan checks in. Uh, someone's coming in to do that uh, in a few weeks time. So. Yeah. And also I think maybe Jane Silent Bob strike back yes. have a They go on I think they they take out some monkeys, don't they? Or well, some think, apes yeah, in they, this case. Yeah, an ape. And also, you know what, it, what the other thing I was going to suggest that we do? 
uh, instead of like a movie or a TV show was I want I would have done the segment on Letterman called Artist or Ape. Great. You know? Well, no, don't. I mean, just a little sizzle there because you should come back and do that. Well, I'm, I'd be happy. I'd be happy to find a few, uh, uh, you know, a few clips that we. There's could maybe... also Trump or Monkey, which is another that's one of his. That's true, segments. but I mean, I think that that's got to be a different episode, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you can't just do Letterman's uh, primate segments, yeah, and no. just group them all into one. That Absolutely. would be disrespectful. Because then you would also them. have the the sort of the wild animal se- sections where people yes. are bringing in animals. Yeah, like, that who was that guy that. It's like Jane guy. Fonda or something. It's like the male Jen, Jane Fonda. Yeah. A, a sort of a white Indian male, male Jane, Jane Fonda. Fonda yeah. yeah. There was also the, the pet tricks. I don't know if anyone ever brought in a primate at pet. Well, there was all oh, those stupid pet tricks and all, no, there were stupid human tricks as well. So I don't know if anybody did a human trick that was kind of something an ape would do. Yeah. yeah. So that's relevant still. Yeah. I did see a guy eat the top of like uh, top, the top off a can and he said that was more of a goat trick. Wow. But I don't the know if he's ever said, yeah, if he's ever, <laughs> uh, if he's ever seen sort of a trick that he thought that was more of an ape trick, right? I, mm. I'm sure some sort of a swinging trick. I think when Swingers. you're on, when, when you're on the air that much, at some point you've said everything. Yeah. So I think if we just went, if we Googled the transcripts of all Letterman episodes, yeah, we'd find With, ape trick. Is there? There should be a website where we can we can search by keywords. Mm. I reckon. So the orangutan, that's a great choice. I haven't come to my conclusion yet. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take people's suggestions and then at some point come to my own conclusion. But I do. I I've been called oranga through my whole life. Yeah. Uh, right. Based on the orangutan, mm. so the red hair. So I I you know I feel some connection. Also, one of my favorite uh, characters in the reboot series of uh, Planet of the Apes was Maurice the Maurice. orangutan. Also, the most believable CGI I've ever seen. Yeah. Bloody hell. If that's not a real talking a, a ring, a ring, orangutan, yeah. I don't know what's going on. A ring-a-ting. A ring-a-ting-ting. That's, that's ting. A ring-a-ting-ting. Yeah, that was a dog, though, I think. No, that was Rin-Tin-Tin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was Rin-Tin-Tin's friend, a ring-a-ting-ting. A, a ring-a-ting, a ring-ting-ting, yeah. Uh, we normally go um, towards the end of each episode, we talk about the primate in this episode because you know how chimps are uh, seen as being about 98 percent shared dna with man yeah humans sure of course how much uh did the character in, in our episode today how much shared dna does it have with humanity so have you looked looked this up no i i just want i mean talking in more general terms if you know the best of humanity yeah right how much uh does marcel as does he personify humans well, he, he sort of ape, he sort of monkified, monkified a human. That was yes. kind of the joke. Um, but how much does he like embody humanity? Yeah, through... you, yeah, humanity, or even you personally. How much do you think you would share DNA with Marcel? Look, uh, look. Uh, it seems it's probably something like ninety-seven percent. Right. Yeah. So you feel a big connection to Marcel. Well, I know I don't feel a connection. Well, but, I mean, I, I'm but asking just, how big but more and understanding percentage. how DNA works. Yeah, well, no, this DNA <laughs> thing is really tripping you up. Well, because I think you're, your you're science going... mind. Look, I've explained it poorly. Sure, <laughs> poorly sure, <laughs> poorly sure. <laughs> I've explained it poorly sure. It's one of my nicknames for you. I've explained it poorly sure. Can we move on? Mitzi Shore died recently. Really, his mom who ran the, the comedy store. Anyway, I didn't know that. Mitzi, sure. Mitzi, sure. So how much? How much of a? So we're going off that, like we're taking this and misunderstanding that DNA thing and using it for our own purposes. How much of yourself do you share with Marcel as a percentage? Well, I think maybe like the only thing that I really share, because in terms of him not wearing clothes, him not being able to really speak in a language that is comprehensible, he doesn't seem to kind of follow any of the customs. You know, maybe we eat, we, we shit, we we are alive. That's kind of the places in which, you know, a lot of that real basic stuff is where we we share commonality. You and he. Me and him. The only other place uh, in which I feel a real connection with Marcel is that uh, as a scientist, you know, which I have been in, in, in you know, in the past and, and I, I hope to be in the future, you stand on the shoulders of giants, you know, those who have come before you, you know, or another way of saying it is uh, the more recent scientists have giants under their butt. <laughs> and so in that way, I think, I'm I'm a hundred percent connected to Marcel, uh, and in another way, it's probably twenty percent. Wow, twenty hundred to twenty. 
So I guess we take out somewhere in between there yeah. and, and say, you know, like 60. Four, 40? 40. 40%. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I reckon I really connected into how I would avoid Ross at parties. Sure. So yeah. I think I'm actually about 84%. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Shared with yeah. Marcel. Also, uh, when Chandler drops in, I juggle for him. That's true. Yeah. That's another excellent joke, which is some d- balled up socks. And then he mentions a melon and yeah. a melon, which Ross is hugely jealous of, but he's jealous even before he mentions the melon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, at least he got, he probably got to still enjoy the melon. Oh yeah. He did. Or he's probably doing a lot of chopping up of fruit because he's got a monkey in his house. And so he's probably doing a lot of fruit chopping to kind of feed the monkey a lot. Yeah. Oh man. What a, and we never see his apartment, but you can just imagine it'd be a real magical place. Yeah. It'd be hard if you had a monkey like that to not like just give it chips and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would, cause it would want to. So, and it'd be so easy. And they're also, cause it, yeah, they, I don't know if they, do they, are they reasonable animals? I can't imagine. I'm, you, what you are they called a, again? Bechamel monkeys? Capuchin. Capuchin. Bechamel. <laughs> That's a white sauce. White sauce, yeah. A, a white Indian sauce, white, I think. Is it really? Well, it's a, a white version of an Indian right. sauce. Right. It's think. like a Chandler. Yeah. The Chandler sauce, the bechamel. Yeah, the bechamel. Could you be Shanimel? <laughs> is that almost something? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, Could you be Eshamel? Shamel. <laughs> that yeah. feels close to something. It feels really close. Yeah. Could you be Shamel? <laughs> Here's a question I thought I'd pose to you, Alistair, because mm-hmm. I know in in my life there is no greater expert on both primates and friends. Yeah. I know bigger experts on primates. I know bigger experts on friends. But but in, friends. in terms of that thing that's like the visa symbol where there's yeah. two circles and a little yeah. bit in the middle. Yeah, the visa diagram. Yeah, the visa diagram. Yeah. You're that little bit in the middle of the visa symbol. Mm. Wow, okay. Is it MasterCard? MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy that they called it the Visa symbol. Yeah, I know. It's confusing. The, the, the Visa diagram. Despite what do you scientists call it again? Hey, Ven. 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 Yeah. I like this is science speak. I don't. I. Yeah. It may. It does not compute. If I, I only Visa, know. I only know because of the greats that are under my butt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like Ven. Ven. Yeah, Greg Ven. Greg. Greg, Greg ben. Venom Denim. Gary Venn. Gary Venn, sorry. Gary Venn, one of the greats. It's weird that they, yeah, so the visa, it's another four-letter V word. But anyway, the visa diagram, <laughs> like which vul- is obviously like the vulva. Same. Vulva. Is that a four-letter word? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it, and no. that's why it's so interesting. V-L-V-A? Yeah, V-L-V-A. <laughs> it's a vulva diagram. It's just a diagram of a vulva. Right, obviously. Yeah, because there's a lot of those. You know, that feels like a stupid question once you've answered it. Um, anyway, so you're an expert on, on friends and also the primates. Yeah. If you had to um, recast every key character of friends with a primate, how would you do it? Okay. Uh, well, I think Ross is probably one of those, uh, you know, those Japanese monkeys that hangs out in the pool. So he doesn't kind of do much. They complain about the cold. They yeah. have to just always be in the hot water at all times. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think, are they a type of baboon? Because they're, they're the red asses, the red faces. Oh, the they're the red ass. Yeah, right. I think there was some sort of baboon, but there's like a snow baboon. Snow baboon. Yeah. And and Al, uh, have you recently been to Japan? Yes, I have. But I mean, I was just trying to think very quickly about what I didn't. I didn't see any snow baboons. I, I look. I I love that. But I mean, did you see any up close? Uh, yeah, we saw some monkeys up close. We went to one place where you go up and you can feed the monkeys, which I didn't do. But you, you know, like it's a place is wild monkeys, and then. But they only let you they you can buy like bags of apple pieces and then you have to go to the particular place and feed them through the grate. Because if you start feeding them everywhere, then the monkeys are just gonna attack people to get food. And also just don't have food on you. Just don't do it. Don't have food on you when you're going up to the monkey pocket. They'll pickpocket you. Well, you know, the, they Rip want they want up. food and they're they're faster and better at almost everything than you. <laughs> right. In a physical way. Wow. Okay, good tips. So that's uh, so that's Ross, Ross. is the uh, cold, uh, cold baboon, ice baboon, or whatever. Who's who's the Chandler? Who's the uh, funny man? I mean, I guess Chandler is the is a sarcastic chimp. Yeah, yeah. With the the classic chimp move of the 
smelling his finger. Smell his finger. And <laughs> falling off a branch. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be after any scratching more chimp? his butt? Yeah, but the and the other classic one is the uh, blowing raspberries. That's a classic chimp yeah. comedy maneuver. That is basically that's a, a Chandler and, zinger or, or Chandler Bing zinger a, a Bing zing Bing zing yeah um, or exposing all the teeth in, in a huge funny smile like that like a, like that which is great on pod. Um, okay, so then uh, who's the other funny uh, the guy? Joey. Joey. He's a bonobo because of the you know there. He's a very social creature, um, but family's very important because he's Italian. But also sexual stuff is very important for him. Be- and the bonobos are all about sexual right. favors. Yeah. Yeah, he is very horny, Joey. Yeah, that's one thing. I don't know if they ever use that word, but he's yeah, he's a horny guy. He's a horn dog. Yeah, and they just try to pass it off as Italian. Yes. You know, is it an Italian Yeah, trip? like it's one and the same. Yeah, but but it's not. It's there are there are plenty of normal Italians whose whose hormones are in check. And you know, they're not they're like he's he's borderline a sex pest. Yeah. You know, he's you know, anno- he's dating too much. <laughs> I mean, that that's starting <laughs> to get a bit judgy, Alice. You're right. Stop, you're right. Stop, stop don't kink shame. That's not a kink, is it? Dating? To is kink. dating a kink? Well, you know, it's it's not about the 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 the, the dating. It's really I felt, felt feels like it's it's not treating people's emotions correctly. Right. You know, I don't know if it's you about respect. People. It's about respect in the end, and so don't shame shame. Okay. I don't know that that didn't make any sense why I said that. Phoebe, I guess Phoebe is probably a mandrill because they're kind of a more serious looking monkey, but that's what allows her dry humor to come through. But, you know, she's very colorful as well. Oh, the mandrill. That's a beautiful animal. I had to look it up. That's Is that the, the king in uh, Lion King? Well, not uh, the king, I think but Raf- the... Rafiki would be a, a, a yeah, he's a, he would be a, a mandrill, I believe. Oh, great. But he's quite a, like a thin mandrill. They're, they're quite a beefy animal, aren't they? Like they're quite thick. Yeah, I think they're quite thick. They're very strong and they're scary. You don't want to be near an angry mandrill. But to be honest, you don't want to really be near any angry primate. Any angry primate. Including humans. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's nothing worse than an angry man or woman. Yeah. yeah. So Except for maybe an angry man or woman with a knife. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. worse. And then obviously from there to like a small gun. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I don't even know, the big, the bigger the gun. You think bigger guns are worse? Yeah. 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 Okay. Because um, Unless un- until they're like comedically sized. There's yeah. a point in which. And you can run easy before they can handle it. Yeah. And maybe it's not even functional because no one's actually can can justify spending the money of making the internal mechanism. Right. You so know? it's just a big prop gun. Yeah, a huge prop gun. So at some point, the size of the gun um, gets less dangerous. But then you kind of get to this, those size of guns where it's like, uh, I think Saddam Hussein at some point was trying to make a gun that was like the size that you would have it on the side of a mountain. It's essentially a big cannon. Right. Like that, you know. And then it gets dangerous again. Yeah. Yeah. But then if you make it even bigger than that. <laughs> that sounds like that's movie evil sort of stuff. Yeah, I think. A big I'm not gun sure. on the side of a mountain. Yeah, I'm not sure if he ever went through with it, but somebody was telling me about it, and that was his idea. I love said, that as an idea. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> we <laughs> lost a real genius, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> we really <laughs> hanged a real genius there. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry about that. I don't want to bring uh, uh, corporal punishment into this. Uh, Too late. No editing. So, I've got a rule. No, you're right. That's cool. Uh, then we got Monica. Monica is, um, I guess, a spider monkey. You know, she's sneaky. You know, good cook. A good cook. Is that a spider monkey thing? I think spider monkeys are. You know, they're they they love cuisine. Yes. Yeah, and they they appreciate it. Um, I think if you were to re- remake Ratatouille with a monkey, it would have been a spider monkey. Spider monkey. Yeah, because they're also kind of the rats of the monkey world. They are. You know, they're small. They they go through your bag. Um, if you leave an apple out, they'll they'll take a few bites out they'll of it. They'll make and it into a souffle. Away. Yeah, make it into a souffle. Is that uh, a thing you can do with an apple? Take uh, a couple of bites and run away, or, into or a, make it make it into souffle. Take you, a couple of bites, run away, turn that apple into a souffle, like the old rhyme goes. Absolutely. And and to answer your question, you can souffle anything. Great. You just got to have enough skill. Okay. Often you can tell a bad souffle when it fe- when it tastes burnt. That's the, that's the that's the first clue, uh, and then obviously Monica. Oh no, sorry, uh, Rachel is a, a silverback gorilla. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? What a! I mean, all every one of those you mentioned, 
beautiful beasts. Yeah, and I was trying to only men- – and that's just because uh, that's a, really a compliment to the casting director of the yes, show. That's, that's right. <laughs> Could not have put together a better a better group of primates as friends in mm. New York City. Yeah. The only crazy thing is that Ross and Monica are brother and sister, and that's going to really be hard to play. Hard to explain. <laughs> hard yeah. to explain. But, it, you know, they don't mention whether or not it's an adoptive family. Right. So I think in this maybe it's like, a perm- like it's, um, it's probably, uh, what's that, you know, permanent care that you can get. Like they're, it's because like their families weren't, Treating them nice, or they, you know, the parents right. had something going on. Oh, so they, yeah, neither of them. Um, there's no blood relatives there. Yeah, yeah. they're kind of, you know, they're they're just in maybe uh, just um, in care. Maybe in this um, primate version reality of Friends, it's all flipped, mm. and Ross has been stolen by uh, what was her name? But Ber- Virgil, uh, Bethel, Bethel. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe Ross has been recovered by Bethel. Yeah, and so then if you were to cast Marcel as a human, yes, who would you use to cast Marcel? Marcel, I get. Well, it couldn't be David Schwimmer because unless you think David Schwimmer's got the. Do you think he can play both sides of that relationship? No, I no, can't no. see it. He's I more think, sad sack side, um, isn't he? You know, I think. Uh, uh, what about Jean Renault? Yeah, Jean Renault. Is that is that his name? The guy, the uh, the the guy who played the um, the assassin in that movie. What was oh that? yes, I gotta try to get his name. Uh, the movie was the movie called The Assassin. No, I've. Oh, is that is that guy? Is it like a French guy? Yeah, French the guy. guy. Uh, the professional, oh, Leon, yes. Leon, the professional. Yeah, that yeah, guy. That guy. He'd be great. Yeah, I think he'd be good. At, he'd play a good Marcel. Yes, yeah. that's you know that would that would. Um, explain his. Can name. he juggle? <laughs> I mean, he's been an actor for thirty-five yeah. to forty years. Uh, That's one of the first things they teach you in, in drama school. Yeah, acting school. It's, it's the art like, of the juggle. He can he can juggle difficult roles. Yeah, like playing a capuchin monkey as and, a man. And all, and often um, people who teach like some of the big teaching schools, they go before you learn to juggle roles, you learn to juggle melons. That's right. Yeah, it's one of the yeah, one bald of the, socks. Yeah. Bald, well, obviously, you start with bald socks. <laughs> Took me a while to realize bald socks wasn't like just like woolen socks that had lost all their wool qualities. Oh, right. Or like socks that were made into like a bag of testicles. Yes. Yeah. Wait, isn't that what it was? Um, do, do you have anything else you want to talk about in terms of this episode of Friends before we move on? No. Because the the next segment on the show, yeah, recurring segment, um, it's the one that the people love to hear. So far, yeah, all the feedback I've gotten, which is none because none of the episodes been released as yet, is this segment about sports teams with primate mascots is taking the world by storm. Yeah. Uh, so this week we're going to talk about Hartlepool United FC. Uh, wow, it's a, it's a soccer team. Hartlepool. Hartlepool. Is that a type of monkey? Uh, no, it's a, it's a place. Okay. But their mascot is Hangus the monkey. H apostrophe Angus the monkey. Hangus. Hangus. Yeah, great. It's a good Celtic name. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, they're uh, Hartlepool's in uh, County Durham, England. So he's just a monkey. Yeah. Like a non-specific monkey. Yeah, he's the monkey. What does he? What does he look like? He looks like classic sort of monkey. Yeah, okay, can you turn the screen towards me? Sure. Uh, well, because, like, you know, I think it's important. Also, would you consider, is, is a gibbon a type of monkey? Yeah, I think the gibbon's a kind of monkey, yeah. Hey, I've I've made a huge mistake when I said orangutan. Oh, wow, he is just like a, I mean, he looks like he's sort of. Uh, Could almost be Mickey Mouse. Cu- it's cu- it's Curious George. Yes. You know, and I think if you can find out what Curious George is as a monkey, that gets us a little closer. Get get it closest to Hangus. Hangus. Um, also, I just realized that my favorite monkey is a gibbon. Gibbon. Yeah. That's a gibbon. <laughs> that was a gibbon. But I think if you, I thought, I think, I think I thought you were asking me what my second favorite type. I, of monkey yeah, no, I did ask in a was. weird way. So yeah, and so that's why I said orangutan. Yeah. Um, but gibbon is absolutely my favorite type. Yeah. Of monkey. Well, it's good to have your top two. So yeah, that's and that I think, perspective. Yeah. And I think it's always good to have someone waiting in the wings, just in case, obviously, extinctions happen all the time. Absolutely. And and it's good because Gibbon is also a whole class, like I think is a 
There's, you know, there's Simeon. Yeah, Billy Jimmy's, Gibbons, the yeah. ZZ Top, or sorry, ZZ Top yeah, ZZ. guitarist. Yeah, absolutely. So this is this is an interesting thing about Hangus the Muggy. According to Wikipedia, one of my favorite sources, uh, in the 2002 council election, the team's mascot, Hangus the Monkey, a.k.a. Stuart Drummond, was elected mayor of Hartlepool. The monkey was the, became the mayor. Yeah, the... The mascot, mon- Hangus the Monkey, um, as he was elected as an independent Wait. under the slogan, Free Bananas for School Children. Yeah, right. And that was his slogan. That was his slogan. Because I think, I imagine if it was the monkey actually choosing that, he wouldn't be giving out his bananas. No. If he that's... found out that there was a source of bananas. Yes. To be honest, that was completely against the monkey's wish. Yeah, he's furious. Yeah. That, that's the monkey's team. It, it it's actually like the op- probably the opposite of his slogan. All the bananas for Angus would be his real slogan. Um, also, uh, is a me- like you know the word mare? Is that like a type of horse as well? Uh, it's a, a, a an adult woman horse. Woman horse, because you know, like just you know, for, uh, for, for 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 American listeners. Yes. See, I would say mayor. Oh, you'd say mayor. Mayor. Like John Mayer. Like John Mayer. Yeah. Which I would say, pronounce mayher. Mayher. <laughs> um. May, yeah, and so, you know, I just wanted to clarify that you weren't saying that he was elected woman horse. No, that's right. He was not elected woman horse, which isn't really a thing. I mean, that's like a, what do you call those part, Cause, cause I don't think part you, woman, part horse creatures? Uh, centaur, female centaur. <laughs> yeah, not a, not a centaur. Yeah, right. We're moving away from where we're talking about. But like the idea of a, like a centaur, but that's like horse and ape. Tell you wow. what, that's better. Yeah. Yeah, but it's. Scary. I'm gonna show you, you're still going horse legs. Still going ho- horse ape legs. Top half. I mean, big ape. You think Go, like gorilla? If you, if you get gorilla up there, then you can still climb. Oh my! <laughs> Even though you're you're carrying that that that, that would be of, the best animal in the world. I think. I think the only thing that would be better would be any bird, right? You know, who in terms of being able to get around. Well, why can't you combine three animals? You know, why is it only yeah. ever two? Because if you of- go horse gorilla. With eagle wings. Eagle wings. Or even pterodactyl wings. I mean, if we're going to start making these wild wishes, let's go all the way back. All the way back to pterodactyl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the pterodactyl was very light, you know, and so in, in very aerodynamic and pointy, you know. So That's true. Their wings probably couldn't handle okay. that much. So, well, yeah, what do we need? I mean, maybe like what three sets has of that... eagle wings. Oh, yeah. You know, as many eagle wings is like it's, it's something like a you know like the amount of wings would be relative to kilos you know kind of like sharks they would just keep coming in but instead of when you lose a wing you get it when you put on a kilo right yeah that's great yeah so as you grow you grow another set of wings yeah they you get kinda, your baby baby back. wings you keep they just keep moving back and then those the, your baby wings kind of end up being like the tail at the end of the plane or even like like thor's wings on his helmet that's right. That's what they start with. They go up to the head, and there's just little head wings. Oh, that's good. Yeah, head wing is a great name for uh, yes. for the. Animal. That's what we yeah we'll call it head wing. Yeah, like oh. like the owl in uh, Harry Potter. Isn't that yeah head wing? <laughs> is that right? That's what is that, isn't that the name correct. of the the bearded giant? Isn't that head wing? No, it's it's head head grid. Oh, it's head head grid. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so this monkey. I, I should have read uh, one line further because it says, even though his candidacy was just a publicity stunt, Jesus Drummond has since been re-elected after throwing off his comedy image and identifying himself increasingly with the Labour group on the council. I like how he's calling this this monkey mascot his comedy image. Yeah, right. Well, I'm glad that he shook it, though. <laughs> yeah. I think it's hard for a monkey to be get, get taken seriously in public office. Right, and so that's you know, and 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 if a monkey can can shake that stigma, I think that was a that's an unbelievable move. Wow, some of the, there was a a referendum in t- twenty twelve uh, that meant that Hartlepool would no longer be, uh, have a mayor, instead being led by a committee hmm. uh, of apes. <laughs> I can only assume that uh, the the paragraph ends there, but I do only assume they've had a couple of um couple of famous fans. This uh, sporting team I've never heard of, including the the rock star Meatloaf. Wait, he was a fan of the. He's of a the... fan of the of the Hartlepool. Is he from the UK? No, he's he's an American. He's an American. He's a American, yeah. Uh, also, uh, Janet Gers from Iron Maiden Is and this... Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott is he American? I have no idea. I couldn't even picture. It. No, he's English. Rid... Sir Ridley Scott. Oh, sir. Wow, he's not what I expect. He looks like a guy who'd do like sort of midday TV cooking shows. Oh, uh, not directing. Yeah. 
huge movies. I think maybe he looks like he, the kind of guy who would who would lead expeditions to the Arctic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or who had and now has seen too much. Yeah, he looks like he has seen a lot. But, he I probably, mean, he, he he's seen like a lot of aliens, right? That's right, aliens. Yeah. I mean, that's where they would visit because it's less populated. It's a good place to kind of get your, yeah. dip your toe in the water, which was not a good idea in the Arctic. No, that's what they didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, the, often the water wasn't even dippable. <laughs> it's a ton dippable. You're really just tapping it. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Can't get my toe in. So that's uh, that's another segment of of the famous segment. Great. Which hasn't really got a name as yet, but I want to have a little. I want to have a sting for it eventually. Yeah, great. If you want to, you try something, and maybe I'll replicate that. If you do anything, do something good. Okay. No pressure. Um. Uh. Ma 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 mascots. <laughs> that's all right. That's definitely going to be used. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair, thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, my Lord. It's been such a joyful pleasure. Joyful pleasure. Yeah. They're the two words I was thinking of as well. Oh, my God. We're samesies. Yeah. Twinos. Hey, monkey see, monkey do. Oh, that's what we say, <laughs> as we always say here. <laughs> uh, th- yeah, thank you so much. Um, for people who want to find more of your work. Oh, my God. Do you think there might be some? I reckon there could be. Well, if there are, guys, you can find me on Twitter at Alistair TB. That's A-L-A-S-D-A-I-R-T-B. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at Alistair Comedy Tremblay Virtual. And uh, you know what? You can find me around the traps around the inner Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, just gigging around. What are your frequent haunts? What kind of cafes do you normally oh, visit? Oh, uh, I mean, usually I'm in my house, yep. and then occasionally I'll be walking the streets or on public transport. Yeah, great. You can also listen to me on the Two in the Think Tank podcast, which is part of the bro- uh, Planet Broadcasting uh, thing. I also do that with Andy Matthews. He was on a very recent episode. Really? Oh, well, I look forward to listening to it. Yeah, you should. It's real uh, good. Great. And uh, you know what? That's it. That's it. Yeah. All right, great. What about you? Where would we find you? Oh, if you wanted to, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Stewart. No, wait. Fuck. Matt. So, why did I say it weird? You it's started okay. that. Matt now Stewart. I can't pronounce things. Yeah, well, I guess so. Matt Stew underscore art. Mm. And uh, on Facebook and Instagram, Matt Stewart Comedy. And, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and probably in some, at your house sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and I don't have you. Yeah, you've been in my house like once or twice. Yeah, I reckon yeah. three or four times. Really? Yeah, as oh, recently really? as like two weeks ago. Really, two weeks ago? Yeah. Oh, was that when we had that breakfast? Yeah. Huh. Where well, you had me over for breakfast? This feels longer ago. Well, look, time is weird. Anyway, thanks so much for <laughs> joining me, Al, and um, we'll see you next week uh, in the planet of the. What's this podcast called again? Uh, uh, Prime gra- mates, grape mates, grape mates, where we talk. All things grapes. <laughs> and vino. See you soon. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.